The following broadcast is brought to you by Public House Media. This is Rachel Mullins, host of Hashtag No Filter Friday, here on Public House Media. Thanks for listening to the following broadcast on Public House Media. Once you're done with this episode, I hope you'll come check out my new show, Hashtag No Filter Friday, where we talk about all of the sexual misconduct allegations swirling around Hollywood. A new show drops every Friday at 8.30 Pacific Standard Time. Don't forget to subscribe on iTunes so you'll never miss an episode of Hashtag No Filter Friday. Thanks again for checking out the following broadcast on Public House Media. Pageant Pals. I'm Maddie. And I'm Jess. And welcome back to Crown and Dangerous. <laughs> I feel like every time it's just like you're so enthusiastic when we start this. Well, I just had a bowl of cinnamon toast crunch. <laughs> and that is my new thing. I have been eating that stuff like crazy for like two weeks. Yeah, I mean, so much that you got the giant box this time. I did. They have different sizes. The regular box, the family size, and then I just discovered the... <laughs> the giant size. Let me grab it. What is it called? Giant size. <laughs> I love... <laughs> That's the box. Don't you love that it was literally within reaching distance? It is. It, it, it was. <laughs> Bigger size, big value. Ugh, oh, I no. I think I just think my favorite thing about them is the little people. Ironically, this is our fitness episode. <laughs> Ironically, we start this off with Cinnamon Toast Crunch, right. and we will be ending this fit and fabulous. Heck yeah. Oh, how's that your, was kind of How's cringy. your week been going so far? Pretty good. Pretty good. It's been busy at work, um, but this week, something new. Um, I've been taking yoga classes mm-hmm. this week, um, just like a trial You're so kind woke. of thing. I'm so woke. I'm just, I'm very, I've been very zen, I feel, um, but it's been fun. I don't know. I've, ta- I've taken like... W- two yoga classes in my entire life but this is the first time I've done it like consistency consistently like a few days in a row and I I don't know I just like have felt better the past few days so that's that's been fun that's nice yesterday I dropped four large pizzas on the concrete (laughs) while walking out of a pizza place that's how my week's been going love that but today I I ate cinnamon toast crunch so it is getting better we're doing good but uh, yeah. like we mentioned earlier, this episode is about fitness and health. Because Wellness of, overall. Right, because we haven't talked about that yet. Mm-mm, really at all. No. I want to know about your what you, what you do for your own health and wellness right now. Well, I eat Cinnamon Toast Crunch, <laughs> which makes me feel better. And Emotional um, wellness. No. That's good. I, uh, I grew up dancing and I was in a lot – I was in – Figure skating, gymnastics, and softball. Uh, Gymnastics left the chat Mm -hmm. first because didn't fit in with my schedule. And then figure skating left, and then softball, and I stuck with dance forever. And then I danced my freshman year of college. And then obviously Miss America involvement kept me dancing, but I started with an, a trainer in lacrosse, actually, when uh, I, I think 20, 2016. So I was okay. with him for two years, but then I moved out of lacrosse, otherwise I would definitely still be at the gym. Um, so he introduced me into weight and resistance training, which was really out of my comfort zone because I grew up primarily a ballet dancer because I had ballet three times a week for two to three hours a night. Right. Um. So that was really weird for me, especially I noticed some biggest difference in my arms. Oh because yeah, you don't upper you, body strength is insane, right. especially we, when you dance. It's mostly just like your lower body strength a lot of the time, right? So we had to build all that muscle, and that was the craziest thing to see. Mm-hmm. Um, but oh, I miss it every day. But besides that, I love kickboxing. Mm-hmm. It gets a lot of my stress, anger. Whatever out, I used to go with my friend Krista all the time in lacrosse, and I miss it, but I need to get more involved here in Madison. Yeah. I've been looking at different gyms, so if anyone's in the Madison area and has a recommendation, please let me know. Yeah, let's kick some stuff together. Right, so I'm definitely, <laughs> I'm not I'm not a runner, which... Oh, I hate running. Ironically, I'm running a half marathon in May. Yep, you go, girl. <laughs> Shout out if anyone's listening. Amanda, I know you listen sometimes, <laughs> but... Um, I'm more of a workout person. I yeah. like circuits. Weight training. I like weight training, resistance training. I love kickboxing, different 
stuff like that where I can really just throw myself into it. I'm it's somebody fun. that I get kind of bored easily. So mm-hmm. I'm excited to do the half marathon because it's accomplishing something new for me. And it's yeah. something that I'm not used to. It's challenging. It, right. It's challenging. But at the same time, it's something I'm just, it's so out of my comfort zone. So yeah, stay tuned for that one. <laughs> but it's so fun. Yeah. What about you? Did you grow up? Yeah. Sports, I mean, it was always like, I always did. Um, I did softball. I did gymnastics. Um, you were talking about figure skating and I wish that was something that I could have done. We just watched Tanya the other oh, day. Oh yeah. Yeah. So into it. Um, but other than that, like I started competitive cheerleading when I was 12. So that was like, that was pretty intense because we would, we would be doing workouts at practices and it was, it was really fun for me because it was like a lot of energetic workouts. Um, and now, and then I, you know, started dancing and stuff just for fun. Like I never did studio dance before, but I did like dance team and cheer and stuff in high school and that kept me strong. But then I don't think I ever really started weight training or enjoyed weight training until like I did like pageant prep. Mm -hmm. Um, so my first talk about your pageant prep. Yeah. Yeah. So when I, I don't know. I've always like when I'm in pageant prep, I'm like, okay, I to to do my best, I need to feel my best. So that means like fueling my body with the food that I need, but also making sure that I'm getting enough food. Um, because I have a very fast metabolism, so that kind of wore me thin sometimes. But then I was introduced to weight training in like 2015, 2016, and that's when I started to get like really excited about it. Um, my first round at Miss Wisconsin. Um, cause my boyfriend at the time was really into like health and fitness. Also Jessica has a new boyfriend. <laughs> oh no. Oh God. We'll talk about that later. Okay. Just letting everyone know. <laughs> um, but yeah, my, my ex-boyfriend was really into health and fitness and stuff. So he kind of got me in the gym and, and taught me, um, like how to create like a workout plan and stuff like that. So that was a lot of fun for me just to try new things and watch myself get stronger. And I think it was really cool that every time I went to the gym, like I, noticed something new and like I noticed that I was stronger every time um so I started to to really put that as a priority for myself not only just for like pageant prep and to look and feel my best but just like mentally and emotionally too Mm -hmm. um and I think that's why like I've I've liked doing yoga too because it's I don't know it improves my balance and it makes me more flexible and then it also makes my mind feel happy too right so that's been that's been really fun so I think the cool thing about health and fitness is that there's so many different ways to do it. Like you can do dance, you can do weight training, you can run, you can do yoga, you can, there's like just so many things that Mm -hmm. you can do. So it's something that everybody can get into. I feel like you just have to find your, the thing that you like. I agree. It works for you. hundred percent. You know? Right. I would say, hmm, I'm trying to think to pageant stuff. My trainer at the time, he made me a meal plan Mm -hmm. before my 2017 Miss Wisconsin run. And I think I, kind of mimicked it my second or my 2018 run Mm -hmm. I want to say but that was the most that was the most exhausting thing for me because it was first of all I had just turned 21 and it was basically no alcohol so that was a little and I was you know I'll I'll be 100% honest here I was somebody who I really I didn't have a typical freshman sophomore year Mm -hmm. college drinking experience because I was always under contracts and I never wanted to get in trouble so I really stayed away from that so when I was finally 21 I was actually like like, yes I can enjoy this and then it was like "Er, er, (laughs) yeah so that was hard otherwise oh giving up Big Macs that was the oh no (laughs) well I used to have this thing where I would eat Big Macs all the time because I thought they were just the best and Jordan my trainer was like you know let's try it and for at least six weeks let's not do any Big Macs and that six weeks it was sort of hard but after the six weeks, you I didn't, want, I didn't anymore. want them anymore. Isn't that weird? It was the coolest thing ever. And now yeah. I never eat them. Yeah. Um, but I'm not saying starve yourself of things you like. Oh, but no, definitely not. It Moderation. Was a, it was more of a challenge that mm-hmm. I just personally wanted to accomplish. Yeah. And I did. I came, I saw, I conquered. Yep. But that was hard. So diet is the hardest thing for me personally because mm-hmm. I grew up a really picky eater. Oh, yeah. And no one in my family is a big health nut same with mine that was the hardest thing I think it was like living at home and trying to do it right and plus too I was used I'm I've also been a very late bloomer in my life Mm -hmm. so I didn't I had like a very late puberty 
so I and I danced so much and I I just never ever really gained weight ever but then towards my later college years my body kind of started changing I talked about the boob job thing oh yeah we love that story <laughs> right and <laughs> things like that's so my body started changing finally and mm-hmm. I was kind of freaked out about it because I was like what like, is happening how do you handle it yeah, yeah because I'm like I'm not used to this this is not me Mm-mm. and mm, so that was the hardest um but yeah it's it's hard to it's talking about swimsuit and health and fitness in Miss America, I don't really know how to describe it because I think there is an emphasis on being really fit, but at the same time, people say that you win swimsuit based on your confidence, not muscle tone or whatever, but every judge looks for something different. And I've seen judges go for one body type and then I've seen them the next year go for something totally different. And even like, even sometimes in the same year, like different prelim nights are completely different body types or, or whatever. So it's, it's, it varies so much, I think, but I, uh, like the consistent thing I think is that you're not striving to be something that is either unattainable, unattainable or unhealthy for you. Right. I think that's the big stressor stressor. It's like, do what's healthy for you. Do what makes you feel good. Mm-hmm. But I think it's and show hard. off the result. It's hard too, because the week of state everybody's always doing something different when it comes to oh food. my god I have always it's a nightmare I've been someone where I get nervous and I don't eat as much but I still eat and I let myself eat whatever I want that week because yeah. I think at that point nothing's gonna nothing's change nothing's going to change but some people crazy diet some people don't eat all day that's some terrible people, like, people have passed out like there's a lot of stuff that goes on and there's everyone's doing something different and there's always people that are like, oh, I can't eat that. I can't eat that this week or I can't eat this. But I'll eat whatever I want that week, honestly. Right. And at that point, as long as it's fueling matter. my body to get through the day. And I think <laughs> everyone loses weight that week anyways because oh everyone's God. nervous and stressed and you're running and you're like, there's not you're really active a lot of all food day. anyways. And... It's salad all week. Yep. Yep. Oh my God. I couldn't eat lettuce <laughs> for such a long time after, after that. Iceberg lettuce. Oh my God. I know. It's... It is kind of crazy, oh. but <laughs> I, uh, what a health, journey. Health and fitness is, oh my God. It's, it's such a touchy subject. I feel like because everybody's, everybody's experience well, is so, different. It's also so personal. <laughs> but it's very it's, personal. It is solely you. Yeah. But the thing is, Miss America, like if you think about it, it is solely you. It is. Everything's based off of personality you. and talent. Yep. You Intelligence. Know. Is yeah, it, you know, but then it's like in parentheses, how you look. Is it like evening gown, swimsuit? Right. You know, you know. It's so, we don't know. We don't know. All judges score differently. Exactly. It's crazy. But, it's crazy. It's crazy. But to move on to transition, um, we have a very special guest to hop on with us today, and we're really excited to have her. Um, in just a moment, bef- at, right after we take a little bit of a break, you're going to meet Miss Iowa 2017, Chelsea Dubchek. Um, she's a Wisconsin girl at heart. Did you compete with her? Um, I competed yeah, with her. Yeah, 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 yeah. We yeah. both did. We both did. Um, in Wisconsin. In, yep, in Wisconsin, in locals. And then we saw her become Miss Iowa just a couple years ago. Um, but she has had such a great journey with her own health and fitness, and now she's doing such great things with it. So we will take a quick break, and we will introduce you to Chelsea. How's it going, everybody? Hey, guys. This is Keith. And Katie from Coffee with Keith and Katie on Public House Media. Thanks for listening to the following broadcast on Public House Media. And when you're done with this show, I hope you'll come check out our show, Coffee with Keith and Katie. Where we talk about our daily adventures over a nice cup of coffee. A new show comes out every Monday at 7 p.m. live on Public House Media's Facebook page. Thanks for listening to the following broadcast on Public House Media. All right, guys, welcome back. We just had a little bit of a break, but we have someone very exciting here with us. Um, we're so excited to, to introduce you to Chelsea Dubchek, uh, Miss Iowa 2017. You might know her as, you may know her as just a good friend, a pal, health and fitness. <laughs> oh Extraordinaire. My gosh. Extraordinaire. Um, just a super cool person in general. So Chelsea, thank you so much for joining us. Oh my goodness. I'm so flattered that you guys asked me to do this. I've <laughs> wanted to start my own podcast, but I don't think I can, like, I don't, I can't come up with enough content to keep <laughs> one going. So I'm happy to be interviewed on them. <laughs> you can totally Perfect. do like a short, like five to 10 minute episode about oh, like, yeah different health and fitness. I would totally listen to that. I would listen. I'll, Tips I'll and tricks. Anyway, tricks. Yeah. 
That would be helpful. Make it work. So let's just kick it off. Tell us a little bit about yourself, where you're from. Um, you know, tell us a little bit about your platform, what you did as Miss Iowa and what you're up to right now. Yeah. Um, so I was born and raised in La Crosse, Wisconsin. Um, went to Holman High School. For those who follow the Wisconsin pageant <laughs> scene, that's where I'm from. Um, I'm t- still technically Miss Holman. I never gave up that title. <laughs> so, um, but that's oh, where I was born and raised. And then when I graduated, I moved to Des Moines and went to school at Drake University in Des Moines, Iowa. And after I was done with school, I stayed. So that's where I've been since um, about 2011. Um, my platform as Miss Iowa was Ladies Who Lift, Strengthening Mind and Body, which really just focused um, on the emphasis of the female the female body and how important it is to strength train and to em- emulate your fitness so that you are capable of everything you can be capable of and completely dispel the stigmas and the stereotypes of quote unquote health and beauty for the female body. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, after my year as Miss Iowa was complete, I felt really called to continue that journey and continue that message. So I started my own business as a personal trainer and nutritionist. I I did some continuing education during my year as Miss Iowa so that I felt qualified to actually coach people doing that. Um, But then I decided to make my own business, which is called Rain, like the crown, Rain, R-E-I-G-N, nutrition and strength coaching. Oh my gosh. So awesome. So you've, you've been busy. <laughs> uh, to say the least. Yes. <laughs> so busy. That's insane, but so, so cool. And it's, it's cool that you are using, you know, your Miss America experience, your Miss Iowa experience, and now carrying it into a career. Like, that, really cool. Yeah. I mean, the year alone as Miss Iowa, but the whole journey, I mean, I started competing in the system when I was 15 and mm-hmm. the whole, t- I mean, the whole journey I would not be who I am today without it. And so it's really transformed who I am and my identity. So there's, there's no, there's no way, honestly, in retrospect, there's no other way I could continue after life after the crown without somehow implementing that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. For sure. I have a question that's not on the outline, but I'm okay. actually really curious. Yeah. What would you say to a girl who's maybe like going into the gym for the first time? How would you recommend like feeling comfortable in a gym for the first time, especially when there are certain gym environments where it's very male dominated and it can be really intimidating? Yeah. What would you, what's your advice for something like that? Because I think for a lot of people, it is really intimidating oh, scary. to walk yeah. into a gym and see all of this equipment and being like, what, what do I do? Yeah. Yes. Um, best piece of advice, find a buddy, whether that's in the gym and you just approach a trainer, like every Globo gym has personal trainers. That's, Mm -hmm. I mean, they're just everywhere. Um, (laughs) or find a friend who already knows fitness or was in sports. I mean, I never played sports. I did not grow up playing sports or an athlete. I was all, the only time I was on the field is if I was singing the national anthem or conducting the band. Um, <laughs> so the fact that I got to where I am is a testament that you, I mean, if fitness is something that's become a priority to you, you can make it work. So the buddy mm-hmm. system is great because I know those meatheads can be really scary, but I promise you they're, they have the biggest hearts and are big teddy bears who just grunt a lot when they lift weights. <laughs> That's perfect. Yeah, I know that was that's such an intimidating part, I think, of starting a fitness journey and, you know, take, making your health and fitness mm. priority. But yeah. just getting your foot in the door is the first step. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so um, let's see. Where Can we, I ask a yeah, question? Yeah, yeah, go ahead. And to, how did you get – because do you still do CrossFit? Yeah. I do, yeah. So how did you get involved with CrossFit? Because I remember seeing your mm-hmm. Instagram story – or your posts. And I still remember my one, I had this favorite post of yours and it was the one where it was, I think it was like half of your yes. face. Yes. The other one was the cross of one. And then you had the picture, I think, where you were like doing something on some bar. Oh, so cool. Like swinging. I don't know what it's called, but it was really <laughs> cool. And I still remember, I still think about that all the time. Oh, that, I love that. That makes me so happy. Because yeah, social media has consumed a lot of my time, so I'm <laughs> glad it's worth it. Um, yeah, so I, I still do CrossFit. So kind of my journey in the, the fitness industry 
Uh, it started when after I graduated from college and I had just like the worst year of my life. I mean, I think we all kind of have this this pivotal point in our in our whole life where we just are in the wilderness and in the darkness and you change completely. And for me, that was the entirety of 2015. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, a, just a series of unfortunate events happened in my life. And I realized that when my whole world came crumbling down around me, the only thing I could control was how well I took care of my body. And so I went deep down the rabbit hole and I really prioritized the gym. And once I started doing that, I really got into nutrition. And so I hired a personal trainer. Um, I was working four jobs. Like I couldn't afford a personal trainer, but I said, you know, screw it. Like this is important to me and I'm going to do something to take care of myself. So I, and he was kind of cute. So um, (laughs) I hired a personal trainer and after a while I was just, I mean, personal trainer slash therapist, like you tell your personal trainer everything. Um, And I was confiding in him about my job at the time that I just, I felt like I wasn't going anywhere and I didn't, I was just doing whatever I was doing to pay the bills. And he said, you know, Chelsea, you're really good at this. You're a really good athlete. You should be a personal trainer. And first of all, I was like, wait, you just said Chelsea and athlete in the same sentence. That's never <laughs> happened before. And you said I was a good one. What? Uh, so then I, I kind of thought about it and I said, you know what? I really love doing this. You're supposed to do the thing that you love most. Why don't I become a personal trainer? Right. And he, uh, he helped me. I got certified. And in, I think three months later, I was hired on the spot at that gym and so I was working full time, took a leap of faith, work, working full time as a personal trainer. Um, and as soon as I started personal training, there was another girl there who was a trainer who had done CrossFit. And I had, I'd followed CrossFit now for about six months. I never actually stepped foot in a CrossFit gym. But the strength training and the, the gymnastics components – fascinated me. I mean, you'd see me doing like handstand pushups in the Globo gym and people were like, what the heck is she doing? Is they're doing like their bicep curls, like what that, that girl over there. So I really wanted to be involved in CrossFit. I just never had, I, I had the same thing. I was scared. I didn't have anyone to go with. And so she, um, that friend said, Hey, I'm going to go to CrossFit over the lunch break. Do you want to come with? And I was like, yes, please. (laughs) (laughs) Um, And so I went to CrossFit with her and I've literally been to CrossFit like six days a week, every week since. Oh my Um, gosh. I fell in love. Yeah. So fun. Oh my gosh. That's crazy though. That like, just like a friend kind of approached you and they're like, Hey, just come with me. And you're like, okay. And now it's just a huge part of your life. Like that's- and The funny part is she no longer does CrossFit. Like, and, <laughs> and she quit that job like a month after I, I got there. We got there about the same time. And I, I honestly think the only reason she got that job was to introduce me into CrossFit. Yeah. Oh, that's insane. So, that's yeah. a really cool story. Yeah. Crazy. It just like connects the dots completely. God is good. He knows what he's doing. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. So speaking of, um, you know, following a routine and and pageant prep and stuff, what was your day-to-day routine while you were prepping for either Miss Iowa or Miss America? This is my favorite question. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Because I'm I'm really proud to say that I didn't change a single thing about my routine in prep for Miss Iowa, prep for Miss America. It was all truly – I wanted to, to walk into that interview room and say, you want lifestyle and fitness? This is my lifestyle. Like what you see here won't be different in six months. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to be one of those girls who walks on the stage and then you see her two years later and you're like, what happened to her? Like she peaked <laughs> on stage. Right. No, I, if anything, I'm going to get more fit. Mm-hmm. And so that meant, I mean, I was doing what I loved. I was crossfitting six days a week, which I honestly wouldn't recommend for most people. Six days mm-hmm. a week is a bit aggressive, <laughs> um, unless one of those days is like a structured, like easy day. Sure. Um, but then I was just eating real food. Um, mm-hmm. I changed my diet so that 99.9% of my meals was coming out of my own kitchen. Um, and that, when I changed that, I mean, my performance in the gym was exponential. I, I was hitting PRs like crazy. I was able to do, I think what probably what you were talking about was bar muscle ups when you're like swinging mm-hmm. from the bar. Yes. I, like overnight could do them after I changed my diet. 
Um, and I just maintained that um, for those who are a little bit more educated on the nutrition end of things. I was doing a combination of the zone diet and uh, counting macros, which is sounds really regimented, but it worked for me. It, it almost was, I didn't have to think about what I was eating. I just knew it was exactly how much and exactly what I needed. So I just, I, I'm one of those crazy people who can eat the same thing every single day though, and not get sick yeah. of it. I'm the oh, same yeah, way, for sure. I mean, Maddie's had cinnamon toast crunch for weeks <laughs> every day. <laughs> is, that, is, that really, is that bad? Is that, is that, is that, <laughs> How detrimental is cinnamon toast crunch to your health? <laughs> Here's my philosophy on nutrition. <laughs> Eat real food and as much of it as your body wants. So real food I define as it once had a mother, grew, flew, swam, or walked on the earth. And as far as I know, and Maddie's looking at her box of cinnamon toast crunch. Right now. <laughs> I haven't. If you can find me a cinnamon toast crunch bush or tree, then my life has changed forever. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's I, so good. <laughs> I love cinnamon toast crunch though too. Oh, it's been a minute since I've had it, but I love it. Oh, for <laughs> sure. You can ask that question I had two a few in a row. Oh, okay um n- the next question that I really wanted to ask you is um I mean we there's this stigma with pageantry that you have to be so thin but I feel like lately like curvier girls have been celebrated more while being super thin or being like skinny is is kind of almost outdated why do you yeah. think that the tables have kind of turned with this this is such a fascinating thing to think about. Um, cause you're right. I really, I think that it's almost detrimental to be the quote unquote skinny girl in pageantry anymore. Um, for a number of reasons. Um, mm-hmm. and I think one, I think especially in the Miss America system where they eliminated swimsuit, I think, uh, this year at nationals, but especially this next year, we're going to see a huge shift in like the, the standard body type. Sure. Um, if you were to even just take, and I hate to do this, but if you were to take average clothes size from the year that I competed to what's upcoming this year, I think it's going to be astronomically different. Not sure. that there's anything wrong with that, but it's, it definitely has, has changed. Mm-hmm. I think the whole movement in our society that is emphasizing, love yourself just the way you are. No one can tell you you're beautiful, all that stuff, which again is very well and good. I think that's infiltrating the, the pageant industry so that we are no longer judging someone based on their appearance, but by Mm -hmm. the content of their knowledge, which is awesome. Um, The thing that I, I struggle with is there's a fine line between Yes, love it yourself the way you are. God, you ma- made you a certain way. Accept that and do whatever the heck you want. Don't take care right. of your body and exactly. force everyone to love and accept you because of what you've done to yourself. For sure. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think, especially in the pageant industry, we're we are bred to be role models. Mm-hmm. And so, if you are someone who doesn't prioritize your fitness and your health then I don't find that to be an adequate role model. And, Mm -hmm. and that's, so I'm sure there's probably going to be a follow-up question here about how I feel about the elimination of the swimsuit competition in America. We were going to ask about that, but I feel like that's old news by now. (laughs) I mean, I'm happy to share my opinion on it because most people ask. Yeah, um, you can for sure. Me particularly, um, which I, I find hilarious. If you had told me, that I'd be known for fitness, like even five years ago, I would have laughed at you. But, um, so my take on, on the lifestyle fitness and swimwear portion and competition being eliminated, AKA Mm -hmm. swimsuit. Um, in general, I do support it. I think Mm -hmm. it is modernizing the organization and I think it does fit with this, this trajectory of the love yourself body awareness movement. Mm -hmm. Um, but I do think there's there needs to be a fitness component or a, a lifestyle component oh, to it. Sense. Yeah, it's it's just too important. And frankly, I wouldn't be where I am without that and without that experience. For sure. um, but I do disagree with, and I think I I personally felt the repercussions of this. 
as it was before, I wouldn't mind having a swimsuit competition, but then call it, don't call it lifestyle and fitness and judge it like a physique competition. If you're going to call it lifestyle and fitness, judge it like a fitness competition. Mm -hmm. Um, Otherwise call it what it is. Call it how hot you look in a swimsuit competition. (laughs) Great. Perfect. I can, I can prepare for that too, but don't tell (laughs) me it's fitness and then it's physiqueness. Right. Um, Right. Because I, (laughs) yes. Yeah, exactly. Um, So that's, uh, that's yeah. gonna hop off my step box. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's great. I mean, we were we were so curious about how you felt about it, but yeah, I mean, that time has has passed. But we're always we're always very curious about. And about- I honestly <laughs> wouldn't be surprised if it comes back at some point. I mm-hmm. I think we're still in the midst of so much change and so much debate. Um, yeah. I don't think this is the end picture. For sure, mm-hmm. for sure. I think yeah. I mean, I feel like even now today with such an emphasis on health and wellness and people are, you know, trying all these different kinds of diets and different ways to, to get healthy and fit. I think it's, it's going to come. I agree with you. I think it's going to come back eventually in some sort of way, maybe not a swimsuit, but in something yeah. else. We never know. I kind of hope so. I mean, I think that'd be good cool. Lord. I worked hard enough for it. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. No kidding. <laughs> all right. Which one do you want to jump to? So what advice would you give to anybody competing if they're, or just anyone in general, if they struggle with body image? Like we said, obviously it's not a part of MAO really anymore, but um, still, like you said, just in general, if you're struggling with Mm self-confidence. Yeah. um, That's a tough one because who doesn't struggle with that in some capacity? Um, And I think to, you know, kind of, playing back to the last question with, um, you know, being curvier as the standard, um, everyone has different goals and everyone has a different place where they feel they are their best. Mm -hmm. Um, and I, as, as a, a coach, I work with people who are both, you know, I have a client who's lost 200 pounds and I have a client who just desperately wants to gain 20 pounds so that people can stop telling her to put some meat on her bones and eat a cheeseburger. Mm -hmm. I mean, there are, and then there's everyone in between. Um, and so I think ultimately, um, one comparison is the thief of all joy. And Mm -hmm. so comparing yourself to anyone else, even your sister, even your best friend, people that you, you don't compare yourself to in disdain and you actually admire, be really careful with that. Um, holding yourself to a standard that's anything different than your own is, is an uphill battle. Mm-hmm. I struggled a lot with um, body dysmorphia and being self-conscious for pretty much my entire life until I decided to get into the fitness industry. I mean, I was the girl in middle school who wore shorts and a tank top over her swimsuit. Mm-hmm. I mean, I remember I remember coming home from dance class and crying myself to sleep weekly because the the girls in my dance completely ostracized me. And I, I had no reason to believe there was anything other than the fact that I had boobs and I had a butt and I was mm-hmm. curvier than the rest of them. Um, sure. That may or may not be the case, but that's how I internalized it. And so it's everyone, everyone deals with it. But um, I think the shift in me happened when I decided I was going to take my health, my fitness, my wellness into my own hands because at the end of the day, I'm given this one body to use during my lifetime here. This is the only thing that if everything else fails, I have this body so long as I'm alive. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to do everything I can to take care of it. I, I don't want to die and not know that I – you know, that I was like, I don't want to get to the afterlife and be like, oh, you could have done a backflip and I never tried it. Right. <laughs> um, and so just to find everything that I, I'm capable of, when I focus on my abilities, the physique kind of just happens accidentally. It's a, it's a happy consequence. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, I honestly couldn't care less about it because I know that I'll be able to squat on and off the toilet by myself <laughs> when I'm 90. <laughs> Exactly. (laughs) Get in those squats, girl. (laughs) Yes. Maybe not with 200 pounds on my back, but no one's going to have to wipe for me. So, (laughs) Exactly. 
Oh my gosh. I, I love that message. I mean, take care of yourself and find what works for you and, you know, just focus on your own health and well being. And, and that's basically what's most important, honestly. You know, I lost the, I, I personally will never be a size zero. That's mm-hmm. just not how I was built. But I also know that if I'm a 16, I'm not where my five, three figure needs to be health wise. Sure. So finding that point of homeostasis that I can live a fulfilling life while being health conscious, whatever number that is, cool. Great. Mm-hmm. It works for me. Yeah, for sure. Oh, hundred percent. I love that. <laughs> I'll reach. The last one. All right. I, I, I think that's all we have, honestly, like this is just, this has been so great. I think your message has been so important. I think it's something that people need to hear, um, especially in the pageant industry, things like this are so stressed and people get so worked up about it. And I think it's, it's just nice to hear your journey and what you've, um, done with your platform and what you've done with your career now. It's just, it's very inspiring. So thank you. Well, thank you. (laughs) Thanks for asking me all these questions. Sometimes it's really, it's good for me to reflect back on the journey that I've been on because I was, I was not always the fit girl. I was not (laughs) always, I was pounded down some cinnamon toast crunch. (laughs) So, um, but it affected me very differently than it. So girl, you do you, but no, I appreciate it. I, I just love, I mean, I think everyone deserves to live in a body that they're proud of. For sure. That's all I want to do. 100%. So before before we let you go, um, where can people find you? Do you have social media or a website? Um, where can people follow you? Yes, I have all the things. <laughs> um, my personal Instagram is Chelsea underscore Dubchuck. Um, my business Instagram is coach underscore rain that's Mm r-e-i-g-n um my website is coachrain.com um and that's getting revamped stay tuned because i've got some (laughs) wicked videos coming out i cannot wait about um and then all of the i mean facebook is all the same stuff so for sure oh so cool well thank you again thank you so much for joining us we are going to take a quick break and then we will wrap up Thank you to Chelsea. Go ahead and follow her on everything and reach out to her if you have any questions or anything at all. But we will be right back. Hi, this is Emily. This is Lindsay. And this is Elizabeth. Co-hosts of Beauties and Headcanons here on Public House Media. Thanks for listening to the following broadcast on Public House Media. Once you are done with this episode, we hope you'll come check out our show, Beauties and Headcanons, where we talk nerdy to you about fandoms, fan fiction, and all pop culture for nerds that you can think of. A new show comes out every Friday. Don't forget to subscribe on iTunes so you never miss an episode of Beauties and Headcanons. Thanks again for checking out the following broadcast on Public House Media. All right, we are back. Woot, woot, woot. Um, a huge thank you first to Chelsea for jumping on with us and sharing some great stories and her journey with health and fitness, tips and tricks. Um, I'm sure it. I'm sure you loved her as much as we do. Um, you can follow her on all her social media, of course. Please do. But other than that, we will wrap up. We will wrap up. We will wrap up. So be sure to follow Public House Media and Grounded and Dangerous on Instagram and like us on Facebook. You can subscribe, rate, and review the show wherever you're listening. Comment, email us, or slide into our DMs because we love to hear from you. We've been hearing from you quite a bit lately, and we love it. We yeah. do love that. It's cool when it's you so see a DM pop up. Yeah, and we're like, oh, hey. Hey, yeah. girl. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Ew. <laughs> So, uh, no, I'm just kidding. We'll anyway, be, we'll be back in two weeks on April 18th for a brand new episode. This has been Maddie and Jess reminding you to always wear your invisible crown, keep it real, and if you do not know what to say, world peace. Bye.